So this is the GoPro Hero 4 camera. In order to use GoPro cameras to record 360 degree video, what you need is one of these, which is a rig. This is a Freedom 360 rig, although there are other companies that do make these rigs. And you match this camera with five others. And then when they're all recording, the field of view of each camera overlaps. And when you take the six bits of video into the software, the software recognizes the stitch points and you end up with a 360 degree video. The advantage of using GoPro cameras is that you get high dynamic range and superior image quality. But the downside is you have six bits of video to deal with and the stitching process uses software you also need to pay for. Another disadvantage to using six GoPro cameras is that there'll be a lot of stitch points, which can mean more potential for stitching errors. Now, one of the most important things to remember is that each camera is set to the same four x three recording settings and I'll list all the other settings you need to know at the end of this video, but the stitching process won't work unless those settings are exactly the same. So I've connected all the GoPros into the rig and the rig onto a light stand. When you're shooting 360 video, it's a good idea to use something small underneath the camera rig. If you're using a tripod, for instance, it'd be more bulky and visible when it comes to making the 360 video. When you're ready to start shooting, you want to take the lens caps off and turn all six cameras on. If you're going to be doing a lot of shooting, it might be a good idea to use the Wi-Fi remote that comes with the GoPro cameras. Once all the cameras are linked up to the remote, you'll be able to turn them all on and off and start and stop the recording. If the camera's not actually moving, it can be a good idea just to weigh down the light stand. When you're ready to start shooting, hit record on all six cameras. It's also best practiced to clap next to the cameras and also move them around a couple of times. This will assist the syncing process in post. So now I'm gonna go through the workflow for stitching together the GoPro camera footage. So to do that, I'm gonna use the Auto Pano Video Pro software. So I double click this, the software opens up and then I just need to drag and drop the MPEG-4s. So I've got six files here. Oops, oh, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. I've labeled them, and if you're doing a lot of shooting, it probably makes sense just to label them so you don't get confused and use different folders and so on, because you need to obviously keep all the six bits of footage that you shot in one place all together. So I just grab these files, I drag them here, now after a few seconds, they all open up in this window here. Now the first thing we need to do is synchronize the bits of footage. Because all the cameras started at different times, and I know that a couple of start cameras started earlier than other ones, I think it's about a minute and a half between some of the cameras being turned on. What needs to happen is the cameras need to be synchronized. So you click this button here, and a synchronization window opens up. And you can either use audio or motion to synchronize. So the audio, we use the clap that we did next to the cameras and the motion will detect when the light stand was moved, uh, rotated back and forth. Now, because the cameras started at different times, I know that I'm gonna to have to put the playhead slightly further down the timeline, somewhere around here. And what I'm going to use is an audio to synchronize. That's a lot faster than using motion to synchronize. Now you can also adjust the search range around the current time to, to use. Now if all your cameras started at roughly the same time, let's say you used a remote to start them, you might be able to get away with a search range of 10 seconds or 15 seconds. Now because I know the cameras started um, with a sort of minute and a half between the first lot of cameras and one of the other cameras, I'm gonna to have to have a bigger search range, which is gonna take longer and a lot longer if you use motion to synchronize. Now I'm gonna try and use audio to synchronize and 120 seconds as the time range, going around about here. So I click audio to synchronize. In the bottom left-hand corner, it says calculating sound-based synchronization. And if it's successful, it lets you know. So let's see, see what happens. Okay, 
So that took about 30 seconds and it says synchronization does not seem reliable. So this can happen. So what you need to do is just adjust this, maybe move it slightly further along and then click again, use audio to synchronize. And again, it will work through and try and find a sync point. So sometimes you do need to persevere. Um, I've just moved a little bit around this point, left and right, and fourth time lucky, I got this, uh, this dialogue here saying, accurate synchronization found. That's obviously what you want to see. And when you see that, you click apply, and the footage all updates. So now it's synchronized. At that point, you can go to stitch. Now you have a few different options here where you can choose if you're using different cameras or different lenses, but we're using the GoPro um, Hero 4 in this case. And I'm gonna click stitch. So now we've completed that part, we can close this window to give ourselves some more space. And then we have a preview of what the 360 video is gonna look like. So we can click along the timeline and this has given us an idea of what we've got here. What you can do next at this point is, I'll just move to the part where we're gonna move out of the way. You can turn these grid lines on and off and this will help you correct the horizon. Now the cameras look pretty straight, but just by moving up and down here means you can just make sure that the horizon is level and that's looking good. And then you click apply here in the left hand corner and I'll turn that grid off. You also have other settings up here to stabilize the footage. You can also adjust the colors and um, the exposures because the cameras pointing down the ground are gonna be perhaps more underexposed than the ones pointing up at the sky. And that will just help this setting here under color will just help blend the colors across the different cameras. Now, because I just wanted to compare the footage pretty much straight out of the cameras between the Samsung, the Kodak, and the GoPro cameras. I'm not gonna do any of this adjusting right now. There's also a blend mode to help with the, uh, the smoothness and the, the, the areas that are stitched. Now I'm just gonna mark in some in and out points so that when I render, it's a little bit quicker. So I'm just gonna move down the timeline to the bit where we are moving out of frame. So there's the cameraman going there. I'm gonna mark an in point. And then we let the cameras roll for about a minute. So just, let's see, yeah, I'm back there. So just move back down the timeline and click this out point here. And then we can go to render out the footage. So you click on the render cog here, brings up a dialog box. I'm gonna use MP4, uh, H.264, 4K. I'm gonna up the video bit rate to 100,000. Uh, the audio doesn't really matter so much for this. You can choose your audio source. So if you know one camera was closer to the good audio source, let's say someone's talking next to the camera, if you've labeled your cameras and you know which camera you want to choose for your audio source, that's where you can choose now. In this case, it doesn't really matter, and this is where it's gonna to save to. So I'm just gonna choose my exports, GoPro, and I'll do test 02. Then you click render. You've got a file up here to re-rendered and then you click on the green button here. And you have a little dialog box counting down the progress of the render. So I start my stopwatch and we'll see how long this takes. So we're coming to the end of the rendering process now. The clip was about one minute, 30 seconds long and it's taken just over seven minutes to do the render. So when this is completed, 
we'll be able to open up, let's have a look in this folder here, files just being made. So what we've got now is an MPEG-4. All stitched together, it's looking good. And what we can do is uh, I'll take this into Premiere Pro and put it alongside the Samsung and the Kodak footage and we'll see how they all look.